turn us up to another little thought, a little something to take home, a little inspiration to, uh, oh, give us something to reach for. Yeah. I, I don't know, have, have any of you disappeared physically from the face of the earth uh, in a, uh, a transportation, heavenly transportation? Not yet, but we are. We're in the process, right? Yeah. We are moving that direction surely and steadily and yeah. Because that's part of our inheritance. I mean, if Jesus did it, Philip did it, Elijah did it, and I'm sure there are a few others. If they did it, then uh, I think that sets the precedent. And Jesus said greater things. So we can't just hold back because, well, we don't see that very often, Mark. You know, well, hello. You know, are we going to be people of the word? Bible believing. Okay. So I wanted to just mention uh, Enoch. A little bit here. I want to talk about Enoch, because he it did disappear, yeah. <laughs> and kind of at a note of finality, or it was pretty consequential. But so I'm not saying that we have to leave it in that level, because I do think Jesus, when he left, remember he was with the two on the way to Emmaus, and he taught them everything they ever wanted to know, needed to know about the Word of God, right? And then it says, and their eyes were opened in the breaking of the bread. Yeah. We're going to break bread in just a little while. But their eyes were opened in the break. And all of a sudden, this is Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> well, the truth is, at the beginning of that passage, it says, and he showed up in a different form. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's what the word of God says. <laughs> he was a shapeshifter. <laughs> You said New Age, they didn't they didn't initiate anything. They stole it. And then they squandered or compromised it with some kind of reputation that makes us scared and squeamish about it, you know? So, you know, what does what do New Agers do? I wrote down a few things here. Let me, let me list a few things New Agers do. Okay? They do uh, pr they pray. They worship, they meditate, they sing, they have ceremonies, they have meetings, they dance, they prophesy, they decree, they declare, they bind, they loose, they speak in tongues, they build altars. Uh, do we do any of those things? Should we be squeamish? Should we faint back, draw back from something just because the dark side does it? No, because they didn't initiate anything. They didn't invent yeah. anything. Right. They create the phony, the false, of what God has done. Yes. Okay. Now take that as our precedent. When we're moving into the greater things Jesus referenced, which I don't know if there's a limit. I don't think there is a limit on that. So well, I got three more greater things, and then that'll be it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so at least I kept my word with you guys, okay? But that's all I got. I don't have any more bag of tricks, you know. So. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he, since he's creator God, he has unlimited creativity. He says, uh, how much can you believe or are you going to choke? Yeah. Remember Nicodemus? If I told you earthly things and you choke, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things that have no earthly parallel that I can liken them to? It's heavenly stuff that has nothing like it on earth. So if we're going to say, oh, the New Agers do that, we can't do that. It's like, no, I'm sorry. We're going to have to get our discerner out. Brush up on our discerner. Find out what their source is and what their fruit is. When we see it, it may look, it may look, it's Joe Blow on the street. We don't know who he is, and he's doing miracles. He's doing signs. He's doing greater things. And so we say, wait a minute. Is that New Age or is that the kingdom of God? Get your discerner out. You're going to have to find out the source and the fruit. Where did it come from? What doorway did they go through? Did they go through Jesus, the door? Remember, Jesus said, I'm the door. If you come in, you'll be saved or safe. And when you do come through me, you can go in and out and find pasture. He didn't say, I'm only going to do stuff that nobody else does. I'm, not going to do only, I'm only going to do stuff that the dark side never does. He just said, you're going to have to discern. The other guys do it, and they're what? Thieves and robbers. That's right. If you come through the door, 
through me, Jesus, the door, yeah. then you'll be safe. You can do this all day long if you do it through me. Okay, so we're moving into angels and saints and travel in the spirit. And we just talked about physical transportation. Now today, I believe we did spiritual transportation. We saw some things. I think we went on a little journey and we felt the witness of it in our being as we begin to move into it. And there's some evidence in the room. There was a temperature rising in the room today as it was getting fashioned and formed in us. So we're traveling and doing things in the spirit, but it ain't going to be long. So we're going to do some things in the natural, in the physical realm. Us, physically, will poof, disappear, and then we're somewhere else. I've told the story, I think, of uh, a lady in my brother-in-law and sister's church. And the story I entitled it, Where's Betty? Where's Betty? Remember, where's Betty? She's sitting on the front row, and she doesn't even really believe in this stuff, you know. And she goes to Nepal. And she smells the stench and feels the fear and people are running into her. She has no idea that she left the front row of the auditorium. My sister watched several times. She's not there, she's not there, she's not there. And afterwards she says, I never left that seat. Well, she did leave that seat. She just wasn't aware of it. <laughs> I say this. I want to seed the soil of our hearts and our minds, seed the soil of possibilities. I believe it's within our faith and our revelation. It's within our level of faith and our level of revelation that we have right now. The things we're talking about in the last few minutes or this morning, it's, that is solid enough foundation for us to experience transfiguration, physical transportation and physical ascension. I think it's very doable. It's very possible for us. Not only do we have uh, biblical precedent, but we have in modern history. Find a book. They're not hard to find. We have some books. In fact, there are books up here for the record. Come up here and borrow a book. Bring back the books that you borrow. And anyway, there's, there's books up here to borrow afterwards. Take them. Uh, check them out. But there are plenty of books to find where the supernatural, the heavenly stuff, has been happening in modern history. Don't allow the fact that our society doesn't talk about it very much to dampen your faith and your belief system. We're not people who walk by sight. We're not people who let this society dictate our reality, right? Our reality is determined by well, first of all, the Word of God, and then any corroborating, corroborating influences that would come along. So I'm going to talk about Enoch just a little bit. Chapter 3 of the book of Jasher. That book is mentioned in our Bible. Chapter 3, the whole chapter, is about Enoch. If you like Enoch, you should read that chapter. It's very exhilarating. <laughs> It inspires me big time every time I read it, and even now as I just think about it. Here's a man who was devout from an early age. In fact, so much so that he became a recluse. And God says, no, no, this is not your lot in life for this time of your life. I want you to go out among the people. I want you to serve the people. I want you to begin to instruct the people. He did. He did so well that the chapter in the book of Jasher says that they made him to be king over the kings and princes of the earth. So all the various kings, they said, we recognize you as being head and shoulders, a godly man, wisdom, and stature. And so they made him to be their king. Now in this case, it was a good thing. And so he ruled well. Somewhere along the line, an angel brought a message to him. The message was, God says soon, he wants you to come to heaven because he wants you to rule over the sons of God the same way you rule over the sons of men. I don't know about you, but that strikes a deep chord in me. 
as street strikes are flaring even more. You and I have various responsibilities in our life, and depending how we're functioning in that and our stewardship of that, it's being recorded, registry in heaven. If you're a janitor or a, a lifeguard at a pool or whatever, are you doing it with kingdoms, the eyes of kingdom, eyes of heaven taking note? Like, oh my goodness, they are stewarding that with kingdom design, kingdom responsibility, kingdom character. Anyway, that was the case with Enoch. It was so, so done, he was done, he uh, walked it out so well that God says, I want you to rule over the sons of God the same way you rule over the sons of men. And during, and from that time on then, he began little by little sequestering himself away from the people. So at first it was, he was uh, gone most of a month and he would come out a few days a month. And he would disseminate then or communicate the wisdom of the Lord to the kings and princes of the earth. And then it got to be that he would sequester himself almost all year long and come out for just a few days each year. And it became known as like, come to hear Enoch speak. Now what did he do? And so this is gonna be hypothetical. What I've told you is part of record, the book of Jasher chapter three. The rest, some of what I'm gonna say now is somewhat hypothetical. But based on what happened in Enoch's life, Enoch's life I don't think this is far-fetched. What did Enoch do when he sequestered himself away? What did he do? The only thing we know in scripture, is two things, one in Genesis 5 and one in Hebrews 11. The only two things we know is he walked with God. Now I'm gonna stretch this just a little bit on this. What does walk with God mean? Just be like, well, I'm mindful of God in my life, and I say a, a prayer once in a while. Is that walking with God? In our paradigm, ascended life, what could walk with God mean? Did he go in and out and find pasture, and he learned to walk with God? I have a feeling that he learned the in and out process so well that God says, you're, you're at home equally well, on earth or in heaven. You know what? You're doing a great job on earth. You're doing so well, kings of the earth are doing well at that point. He says, come on, come up to heaven. I want you to rule over the sons of God. So we learn to walk with God. I want to just leave that. I want to just throw that out over us. That Enoch didn't just practice being a, a prayerful, mindful, mindful of God kind of guy. I want to throw it out to us, especially as the Lord's stretching and expanding our understanding of our inheritance in the heavenly realms. Something was different about Enoch. Yeah. Something was so much different that God says, you don't have to die. In fact, now let's just go to Hebrews 11. Yeah, I'll just uh, put it here first. It says, and listen to this, so it says, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he did not see death. How was it that he didn't see death? By whose faith? God's faith and his faith. Well, it seems to imply that it was his yes. faith at this point. Now, we also know in the New Testament, it says, have the faith of God. So maybe that's even a much better faith to walk in, but even in Enoch's faith, he was able to escape death. That's exactly what it says. And we're Bible-believing believers. <laughs> Might have to remind ourselves just every once in a while. <laughs> he could not be found because God had taken him away. Before, before he was taken, listen to this, he was commended as one who pleased God. Now you say, well, how did he please God? I think it was he learned to walk with God. And I'm, like I said, I'm stretching this a little bit. I'm kind of, I'm, hypo I'm speaking hypothetically. But I feel like that Enoch learned how to walk with God in the heavenlies. His faith. Now we don't know where he got his faith. 
He may have got it from Adam because his great, 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 seven great grandpappy was still alive. I have a feeling that when he was just a little boy, he sat on Adam's knees and said, Grandpa, can you tell me about the garden? Can you tell me what that was like? You walked with God in the cool of the day. Wow. Adam, can people still do that? Grandpa, do people still ever do that? Adam says, no, I haven't seen anybody yet, Sonny. Do you think they could, Grandpa? Do you think it's possible? Well, I think it's possible, Sonny boy, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> and according to Jasher 3, chapter 3, it says he was a devout man from his early age. I just have a feeling something clicked in him. I want to be that one who learns how to walk and talk with God in the cool of the day. My grandpa hasn't seen anybody like that since the garden. I want to be, so he began to sequester himself away and God says, nah, it's not quite time for that. I want you to go out among the people until another time in life. And then we'll pick up where we left off. I have a feeling that something happened in Enoch's heart, in his mind. Something was awakened, a hook got set. He says, I want to be that person that walks at my grandfather's anointing. The one that he squandered, one that he lost for whatever reason. I want to be, I want to go back into, whether it's the garden or the heavenlies, I don't know. We, we don't know that, but but now listen to the next verse that was that was Hebrews 11 5 now read verse 6 remember we just read by faith Enoch was taken up and he did not see death that's verse 5 verse 6 and without faith it's impossible to please God did you catch the connection did you catch the proximity between those two statements? Wow. By faith, Enoch didn't die, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Do you? I, I don't believe this is meant to be in, in any way an indictment against us. It's meant to be an invitation. Come on, come on, come on in. Enoch, by faith, did not die. Guys, it's possible to have that kind of faith because without faith it's actually impossible to please God come on in if I gave the standard if I give the, the the standard for what's right and good then God says also I'll give you grace I'll help you I'll help you into that level of faith I'll help you into a level of faith that you could fall right up into Enoch's footsteps. We do know that Elijah did that. We only know of two biblically that did not die. There may have been others. Maybe we just, they just didn't tell about it. And I have a feeling we probably got ever living ones alive in the earth right now. Immortals. Jesus seemed to kind of allude to that. Remember with John and Peter? What's it to you if I determined that John never dies. I'm not saying that's a statement of the way it's going to be. Jesus said the possibility. He wouldn't say a possibility if it wasn't possible. Guys, there's an invitation for us. Invitation. There's an Enoch kind of invitation. He, he set the precedent. He raised the bar. I think, and I'm just going to, I'm going to dwell there, I'm going to camp there, that he learned to walk with God, not just as what we call a good Christian boy, having an earth-based Christianity, but he learned how to walk in the heavenlies. He learned to do John 10, 9, to go in and out and find pasture. Heaven takes note. <laughs> Heaven takes note. And notes when the soul, the heart, the mind, is if a man or woman is gripped with desire, it says, I'll not be robbed. In fact, the scripture says, 
the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And where, where does that violence come from? It's from the enemy. It's from the dark side. It's from anything. It's from life. It's just the cares and the pressures and whatever life that wants to steal and rob us from the promises and the inheritance of, of God. But it says, but the violent ones take heaven by force. I don't believe that in any way means they bend God's arm. They don't manipulate God. That's not what we're talking about. It's like, I will not be robbed. Devil, I, I declare a moratorium on your whatever your efforts in my life. You're done. I'm moving in. Hell or high water, I'm moving on in to the designs, the promises, and inheritances of God. I think there's some really big stuff out there ahead of us. Really big stuff. Patricia King says it's going to be shock and awe. Shock and awe. You know, we use that usually in negative terms. When, when daylight dawns, remember we said in the past that the righteous grows brighter and brighter even to the noonday sun. When we begin walking in noonday sun. We've been calling the night day. We've been walking in darker times. And we're like rallying with one another. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this so cool? We got the prophetic word and we got a little bit of light here and there. And by the way, I'm not trying to diminish or minimize that in any way. I'm just saying our growth process, our growth traje trajectory is so much greater than we've ever, ever dreamed of. Able to do abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. How much can you imagine? How big is your imaginator? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever pushed it out to the borders, to the limits? Like, yeah, that, okay, I got that, and that, and I got that, and that. No, I can't imagine that one. Have you pushed it that far? Where does that take you? Yeah. And God says, beyond that, that's what I want to do. Guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. <laughs> We've got some amazing things ahead of us. And sometimes we just soar and just it's so exhilarating. Sometimes we have to plow and sometimes we have to like, oh, I'm going to press in, you know. And, but we take it all in stride. Yeah. It's just part of yeah. moving on into, do you know there is no, no man or woman of faith that hasn't had to grapple with resistances, hasn't been tested at the very max in regarding their faith. That's, right. That's how they become men and women of faith. That muscle, yeah. if it was there, didn't get built by just not exerting it, not stretching it. It had to be moved. Men and women of faith have to press. And so sometimes we fly high like eagles and sometimes we press and we wage war or we take it violently. Meaning, I will not be compromised. You know that thought that's been coming? No, no thought. You cannot dominate me. You cannot be a dictator. I will not succumb. And I, I reach down into the cockles of my heart, whatever it is, and I pull up things that will help me to be an overcomer. So, I uh, just want to speak that over us, and then I think we want to do some uh, communion. So, uh, should we have some? The kids hand up. Communion comes. Oh, yes, we got them. Very good. So, so I want to just speak over us. Thank you. I just want to speak over us. Our ceiling is, well, <laughs> that's just an earthly term. It's just, it's sad how much the earth has perpetrated its values on us. Because the truth is, there is no ceiling in God. No limits. Lord, thank you for... Uh, raising the bar and removing the ceilings. 
Lord, you're stirring new faith in our hearts to reach for the more in God. The more that's, it's where we were designed to live and move and have our being. It's our inheritance. It's our bread. It's our bread. It's our lot in life that you have purposed for us. It's our promised land moving into territories and dwelling in houses we never built and reaping from vineyards we never planted. Yes. And the rain from heaven just waters all of our efforts to make them fruitful. Oh, you're doing so good, Lord, to raise our expectation and awaken new faith in us. You're doing so good, Lord. We love what you're doing, Lord, and how you make us come alive. So, Lord, this faith that Enoch had, this faith, you said without faith, and you seem to actually tie it into Enoch's faith, you said without faith, it's impossible to please you. Lord, I see that as a big invitation from you. I see you that that is a most wonderful invitation. Come on in, my dear ones. Come on in, my beloved. Come on in, my precious ones. I'll give you grace to go where society says and even religion says you can't go. I'll give you faith and grace to go where you used to not be able to believe. Lord, we just want to say yes to your invitation, to your design yes, for us. Yes, yes. Oh, there's so much more available and we would be those glorious ones oh Lord that are caught up off the face of the earth yes I'm going to say it again we're caught up off of the face of the earth and we can go in and come in and go out of this wonderful door oh we just find ourselves doing it so easily like Enoch did and we know Jesus did it just this in and out, in and out until there was just no hoops to jump through, no mental gymnastics required, a heart has already been established, the route and pathway is firm, and it leads us to paths of life everlasting, life and life more abundantly. Oh, I declare that over us, Lord. Life and life more abundantly, paths that lead to life everlasting. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're just going to quote these three things or just say these three things over us again. In this year, I do believe it's within our faith and revelation to experience transfiguration. Lord, that means glory, light, and changed into another form. That's the definition in Webster's Dictionary. And you said it in your word, Lord. Lord, I bless our people. I bless us we would be from some of the first fruits beginning to manifest it, not just on a one-off basis, Lord, but we begin to see it begin to take place regularly, Lord. We begin to expect transfiguration, Lord, and physical transportation, Lord, escorted by the angelic, escorted by Jesus himself across the face of the earth and out into the universe, Lord, to take care of kingdom business. So exhilarating. Lord, we're going to say, like Mordecai said to Esther, who knows but what you came to the kingdom for such a thing or time as this. We say that over ourselves. We came to the kingdom for this, Lord. This is what we were designed for. And we receive it, Lord. And Lord, also for physical ascension or levitation, we'll see it begin to happen among us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you don't mind, take your communion elements. Remember the verse I quoted from Jesus and the two of the waiter of Emmaus? He broke open the word of God, Hallelujah. scriptures to yes, us. And afterwards, remember they said, did not our hearts burn? Hearing the word, I mean, 
When he's got the juice on him, when Jesus himself was speaking, even they didn't know who it was, though. Their hearts burned. Yes. Still not knowing who he was. And then, in the breaking of the bread, and I'm going to just ask us in just a second to collectively, together, we're going to break the bread. Just release that same dynamic of our eyes being open. Same thing Jesus and the two on the way to Emmaus experienced, all right? Jesus, thank you for your body that was broken for us. Today, uh, we experience some of what your brokenness accomplished for us. Breakthrough, thank you, Mary. Traveling out through the universe, Lord. You made, you're bringing us into oneness, into wholeness with you. Your brokenness so we can come into oneness and wholeness. Thank you, Jesus, for how your brokenness also paid the price for physical healing. In this room, Lord, physical healing. Even as we partake of this bread. Thank you. If you don't mind, if that's you, just put your hand on wherever it is in your body or... Maybe you're standing a proxy for somebody. So we're just adding faith to this. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus, thank you for this, your broken body. You said as often as you do it, just remember me. Oh, and that ain't no problem this morning, Jesus. It's easy to remember you. To come into oneness with you. So Jesus, we're gonna do what the two in the way to Emmaus experience. You said in the breaking of the bread. So everybody, if you don't mind, break the bread. Yes. And Jesus, they experienced that their eyes, God, opened. If you care to lay your hands on your eyes or however you want to. Now we're speaking Obviously, it can apply to our physical eyes, but we're certainly also very much applying to our spiritual yeah, eyes, yeah. as Ephesians calls it, the eyes of our heart. Lord, we bless our eyes that in this breaking of the bread, dreams, open-eyed visions, yes. ears opened up to be able to hear in the spirit realm, melodies choir, angel choirs, sounds of heaven, the triumphal sounds of heaven, the glorious sounds of heaven through our spiritual hearing and even potentially our physical hearing. Our sensory apparatus, Lord, in all of our five senses, in our golden imagination, in our knower, Lord, they all come into this ability to see like we've never seen before. Thank you, Lord Jesus, we receive your body now. There it is, nutrition, nourishment, physical and spiritual calories, so to speak, going into our body right now. Jesus, you said, he who eats my body and drinks my blood will never die. I don't know. Jesus, maybe you said that same thing to Enoch. And he went back to before time when you, the, slain, the uh, lamb was slain from before the foundation of the earth. Maybe he went back there and partook of your body and blood. I don't know. I don't know. Jesus, all we know is that your promise to us will never die. Jesus in this blood now is not only the nutrition, because the life is in the blood, but it's also our vehicle. It's the empowerment to move into kingdom realms that have never seen before, where man has never gone before. Thank you, Star Trek, or whoever said that. <laughs> Star Wars, I don't know who said that. But anyway, man's never been there before. 
but that's our inheritance. Everybody just say that with me. That's, that's our inheritance. inheritance. Once again, that's, that's our inheritance. inheritance. We're not just going to be land lovers, just earth dwellers. That's not our lot in life. No way. We're to go where man has never been before because that's our, our inheritance. inheritance. So Jesus, thank you for this blood, your blood. We receive it gladly. Song once again. 